Can you guys see it all right? How's the image? How's the sound? I don't want to get into the more important parts of the painting and find out later. There's something wrong. Thank you for your email, says Roberta. <laughs> all right, good. I, I try to send out as much reminders as I can, but you know what? I need to stop. I need to stop blasting people with these with these big newsletters. So it's, it's going to be the same each week. I'm going to do this each week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Gives me a break on Wednesday. Gives me two success successive days at the beginning of the week. I like doing it in that pattern. So I can <clears throat> I can keep doing this schedule. So just come to the Mural Joe channel and tune in at 9 a.m. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Those are going to be for now for now my live stream days. And so I'm going to read a few of these comments here. Mad Morph says, what do you think about the technique of the old masters? Warm shadows, cool highlights, cool shadows, warm highlights. I think that it's bound to happen because uh, it just in order to get believable highlights and shadows, they end up being different colored uh different colored lights like if you let's say you put gray next to any color it takes on the opposite so i think a lot of the time the masters were just putting color in the highlights and then it made the shadows turn cool you know but i also think there's a lot of very smart strategy to it yes that's very good strategy because we have a big blue sky turning turning everything blue but then the sunlight brings out brings out all of the oranges that the blue does not and so we get that natural contrast in nature it ends up being a real eye-catching contrast if you intentionally create it but just by having gray on on any color you'll get that opposite because gray takes on the opposite of whatever color it's against can water color paper be substituted for canvas well it'll just wrinkle up a lot on you and it doesn't take nearly as much of a beating as this but i say paint on anything you can paint on it's better than not painting all right hello again from atlanta georgia cool all right thanks thanks for tuning in the person that loves animal crossing says hello <laughs> i'm reading <laughs> reading this here Excellent stuff. Greetings from Great Britain. All right. Cool. Thanks for tuning in from there as well. And we've got G Wiz tuning in from Florida. Cool. Susan says, Gesso the paper first. All right. Good call. Yeah. See it because then, you know, if you get it sealed and the moisture stops soaking in, I can see that. Howdy from Vegas. All right. Thank you, RJL. Your stream's good. Go all right. Thanks. That's encouraging. If you guys ever have good feedback from me, let me know. So, I did actually receive some very helpful emails, and so I'm striving to to uh, make this a better experience for all. Hi, Joe. I'm here. All right, Studio Legal. Thanks for tuning in again. And we've got. Uh, from Dominican, all right, the the nature isle of the world, really, is it? Okay, that's very cool. Thanks for tuning in. And that was, oh, oh, oh I, can't, I can't say that username. Um, maybe that stands for something. <laughs> all right, well, thanks for tuning in from the Dominican. We've got Believe 3.0 is back. Thanks for being here. Joe, uh, hi from Miami. Cool, cool. Thanks for tuning in from there as well. And we've got more from UK, England, West Lake Village, California. Is Rebecca Bogan. All right, thank you for being here. So what we're going to do today is start filling in the cliffs and the foreground. Pronounced Omni. Okay, thank you. Omni. Okay. Okay, did I get it right now? Pronounced Omni. Thank you for that clarification. I'm from Syria, my brother. All right. Thanks for being here. All right. What a 
what a privilege to have uh, you guys tuning in from from far countries, from me anyway, far from me. Hi from Budapest, Hungary. All right, cool. Upstate New York. Hope you're doing all right there. Um, I, he I heard the virus spread pretty bad in New York, but how awesome to see the videos of the city lighting up and celebrating all the medical work. That was very inspiring. I liked that. Just Texas. <laughs> cool. From Bosnia. All right. From Arizona. All right. My home state. Cool. I consider it the best state. <laughs> I'm painting, you know, this is all inspiration from Arizona, since it's what I stare at most of the time. Do you like the painting of Bob Ross so much? I so much like his painting. Malawi, cool, Brazil, and Maine. We got all kinds of, all kinds of locations. How awesome is this that we can gather online like this? So fun. If I could go visit all those places, you know I would, man. It would just, that would be the perfect life for me. Forget about having a house. I would, I would just go. But, you know, maybe another season of life will bring that when I don't have, have uh, people relying on me here. I always feel like a community mindset is, has been the best thing. My wife taught me how to have a community-oriented mindset. And so when I go to do these live streams, it manifests in this. When people say, you know, it'd be better if it was like this. I think, well, I'm a, I'm a team member. You know, I'm, I'm, the guy doing the, I'm the guy doing the painting, the researching, finding the answers. But I'm, I'm getting all kinds of benefit from the people that are willing to sit and watch and listen. And we help each other. You know, community mindset has just benefited me greatly and caused me to want to travel and visit where you guys live. What is your opinion on heavy body acrylics? I don't have any heavy body acrylics. I I have yet to use them, I think, but I have these and I did I did my um I did my how to paint a beach blade with acrylics video with these, with these acrylics here. So as the painting progresses, maybe I can do some uh, details with these more typical artists artist acrylics they're not heavy body though they still spread out pretty quick i think they'd be really fun to do palette knife work with that's what i think i think any paint has has its value any kind of paint has its value a lot of the time i need you to show me what you can do with it though all right now i'm going to start painting first a big cliff right in here and so I just want to start laying out my picture and I'm looking at I'm looking at that image thinking let me scoot scoot out of the way a little bit here so that we can get a little more light in those dark areas. You're going to want to see a little better when I'm working with darker colors. So, let's go over here and bump up the exposure just a touch or a lot for for <laughs> it just kind of has sudden sudden jumps and so let's go over here and see if we can do a slight adjustment on that okay now you can see now you can see in here better that'll be good and we're going to start putting some cliffs in the foreground here all right we've got our camera in place let's grab a brush and the first thing i like to do with the brush is give it a quick dip in some water so i just you know get the brush wet because i don't like when paint hits dry bristles and gets all goobered up in in my brush and so just starting with the wet brush and then constantly having a towel to wipe it on to empty out my excess paint. Someone said on the comments or maybe in the live chat as I was reading later, I like to kind of scan the, I like how YouTube records the live chat. I've, I've been scanning it later to see all, all the comments I miss while I'm painting. Anyway, someone said, uh, someone, uh, I forgot what I was gonna say just now. Someone said something pertaining to brushes 
you know, I've got to remember it. Will someone please leave me a chat and tell me what I was talking about before I completely blanked it out? <laughs> we were going to do some clips here is the last thing I remember. All right. Ola says, says uh, how do you say that name? Wilren. Hola. Okay, cool. Thanks for being here. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to start with red and black and white to put some shadows. So I just get my color in place and where I have more of the more of the black on something facing. So someone mentioned cool light versus warm, cool shadows, warm light. Uh, versus you know you could go either way so warm shadows cool light cool shadows warm light just whether something's more on the blue green end of the spectrum or on the red orange color of the spectrum so here i want it facing away from the sunlight toward my blue sky so i'm going to put all my highlights on the more black sections to create something like this that's facing away from from the sun and i'm just going to start loading this up with black and with maroon and oh i remember what i was talking about that's why no one reminded me because i never actually started the sentence all i said was i was reading the chat <laughs> this is this is valuable someone said how do you dip in the in the paint buckets without them all mixing and so if you're wondering the same thing like i've got my bright yellow over here i don't want to put a bunch of black in it but if i just go down here and wipe on some some surface like the okay the towel i don't want to destroy that pretty blue water but i just do that i don't need to wash the brush out because of the nature of this paint it's not like oil paint oil paint is heavier bodied it has like almost zero surface tension so it just barely touches and it all bleeds together but this will dip right into a bright color like this without leaving any dark dark paint in there if i just dip once and and leave it at that so one dip i don't put it in there and stir it at all and that's how i uh very rapidly revolve between colors without uh, without it mixing now i have to figure out what i'm going to do with this yellow i'm thinking we're going to have a green bush in here so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna put this yellow on here <laughs> put it on simmer for later. Now we're going to come over here and start doing all my all my dark colors and make a cliff going down right here. So I've got black, I've got maroon. And I'm just going to let my brush strokes build the rock. All I'm thinking is up and down. And it's very dark. This is very dark. A lot of black. Let's put some more red. Where it's more red, I'm going to get a little bit more purple tones where that red mixes with the black. And then more brown, not, not quite as violet, where the more orange color. So I keep calling it maroon because that's what the paint store calls it. But it really is a dark orange. Let's just think of it as a dark orange, like rust. Okay, so now we're going to go more of this. And I think I want to see a taller cliff in here so when i'm building a foreground in my picture i'm looking for lines you know i, I always talk about this it's, especially since it's kind of a self-realization lately i love lines and they stick in my memory shapes and lines i backed up the camera for a moment because i want you to see that i am very much enjoying creating a line that goes and swoops through here. I've got another line that, that swoops right there next. So it's kind of like I've got this flare going out like that. And I'm just looking for attractive lines in my picture. They don't have to be continuous and unbroken. But I'm just letting you know my creative strategy when I'm trying to put together an attractive piece. I know there's other uh, great strategies out there for composition. I don't know how to do. I just know that I love lines. And when I'm working creatively, I'm trying to see what, what lines are being created by my objects and then kind of run with that. So 
I'm going to go like this and now start putting white wherever I have that black. So white, pure white right there. I've got black there, black here, black here. And it's okay for it to hit the color. That's great. It's great if it hits the colored parts, but I'm aiming for my blacker parts first. And then the result is going to be edges that kind of turn and look a little a little more a little more turned away from me toward just the skylight where these turned this way, maybe catching more colored light or maybe just darker. You know, everything is a light in a painting. So, so the light bouncing off the rock and hitting the rock again. So bouncing off one edge. So these little edges can be that. So they're, they're less blue because they're not as exposed to the skylight. You know, these edges facing this way, they're very exposed to the light from the sky. So they're going to be grayer from the blue light shining on the orange rock. But then where I have little edges turning toward me, those have a big rock wall on one side, which is not blue. And so if you just remember in a painting, everything is a light, then it helps, helps to understand the, you know, what kind of an environment you're, you're building. Now I'm just taking the brush and looking for edges looking for edges that I've got already and maybe just seeing if I can mess with them a little bit, turn them into something, mix the colors a little more. Maybe I don't want them so, so separated that I still have the primaries in there. Down here, I want to have a lot more white because I want this looking real misty and deep where it's going into these falls. So I'll take some I'll take some white and put it right in here behind this fall. And I'm not going to try to make more falls. I'm painting in the direction just kind of to outline, just to outline this. But what I'm going to do is just take this bright color right across, just start blending it into here. Just bringing that that cliff down into this lighter, lighter grayer color. And I think that some blue would be real pretty in here. Let's put some, let's put some blue. And then maybe a little bit of magenta because this will give me a brighter purple if I use magenta instead of red. And look, I remember to get these out this time. Here's that color in a tube. This right here uh, was the closest thing I could find. And this color is called Theo, Theo, T-H-I-O, Theo Violet, made by Grumbacher. And I'm so impressed with their pigments in this. I haven't found, no, I haven't used other, a lot of other brands too. But So this is the same, same kind of color. And when I'm painting with tubes, I, I do that. I just I just squirt a, a blob onto the canvas. And then similarly, I stir it around after I get it on there. And so now I've got this purple color for all of this, all of this mist that I want to be further away. I'm going to just overlap this. I can always put more of that waterfall coming down. But to get this mixed and to get an edge on there, I'm going to go like this and start using strokes that are going up and down and gradually fading this into the shapes that I've got up there. Make this come down like that. Let's get some darker color. Pull it from here, make it go down there. And it looks like I might might be better off just to repaint some of this up in here. That's a very simple process and easier than than trying to easier than trying to match and overlap. Let's put black, let's put color, a little more. And then same process. I just 
I'm going to put the white in after I get the balance of black and maroon that I want. Get a little more black in there. Make a nice grayish colored cliff. And then the white is going to go wherever I have that blacker color. And then everywhere else as well, I never really leave any of it completely unmixed. It's just how much I mix each part. Okay, so now we've got some rocks going up and around this little waterfall here. And I'm just looking for my, after a while, I'm just looking for little, little eyesores, things that, that don't look quite right to me. And I'm brushing over those areas that are still a little bit too bright white or a little too streaky, you know. I'm just kind of scanning the, the texture of the surface I just created for little things I don't like after I, after I get it to this level. Now I'm going to brighten this up. Let's put white in there and make a little more, a little more of this fog coming out because it's going to give me a good background to put a, like a, a shadow coming out of this mist of some kind of vegetation coming down on a cliffside into that valley. So I just want to set it up first and get my atmosphere in there. Go like this. Now I'm going to pause in a little bit. I'm going to pause and take a look at, at uh, whatever comments, questions are there after I make some progress on this. So just so you know, ahead of time, I want to designate some some little slots of time for doing that in between some some very good advice i got from one of our one of our fellow viewers that i appreciate it's good to i think let you know that i'm going to be designating time to reading those comments after i get to a certain point here and now i'm going to put a little more white i just want to brighten this up to my liking right here to create some atmosphere because that's what's going to make my, my shapes pop out that I put on top of this. So this is going to be easier to blend in about five minutes. So I'm going to stop right there and just leave it like that. And now I'm going to put another object coming right up out of here. And I'm going to use pure black to start with. Because I want it nice and dark. And look, it's going to hit that white. It's not going to be nice and dark because it's going to mix with all that white. That's okay because it's going down into that mist. So let's put black going down here. And the thing I can do with black is I can turn it a little bit green and make it look like, like a bunch of vegetation finding its way down into all this mist so i'm going to make the edge kind of broken up and it just gets lighter and lighter naturally here i'm going to make some overhang that seems like it'd be fun Putting a little bit of overhang coming out maybe we got a cliff coming out this way put some vegetation coming out there i always love the combination of the you know landscapes are, are so fun to look at I think a lot of the reason is the combination of the horizontal with the vertical. You know, I love towering vertical shapes in contrast to the long horizontal. I always love that combination. And so I've got this tall cliff. I'm putting this kind of tabletop right in front of that tall cliff of some kind of vegetation coming across. So here I'll start putting maybe just uh, Maybe some of that green. Let's just put some green in there. I'm just going to blast this with some of that phthalo green. I call it phthalo green, but I just got it from a paint store. I, I asked them. I just put it into this can. I don't think this is actually this brand of paint. I think it's another Sherwin-Williams paint, but I just asked them for their dark, their dark green pigment all by itself. 
in a can you always ask manual formula that's the key will you do a manual formula for me that has just your dark green pigment in a deep base this is what i always ask for and the employees will be funny and say you know, uh, well, maybe you can just pick a color off the chart and you just have to be persistent. Say, no, no, I really need to do this. This guy on YouTube said that I can make a manual formula. <laughs> One of these days I got to post all of these formulas. Oh, I got to post that to make it easier to ask for. So, phthalo green. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you if you, if you tackle this from two... Uh, acrylic paint right here. Ah, phthalo green. So this is the exact green that I'm using. So I could do the same thing with this tube. You can see it. You can see it on this tube how dark it is, and then you know where where it's just barely catching the light. It turns very bright green when it mixes with any light color. So same thing with this. It it uh is going to have the exact same turquoise hue to it that, that uh, this green out of the can has same effect on there. Now I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and put that in there where I want some highlights. So maybe up in here I want some highlights where it's coming more into the light, but maybe not so much down here. So I'll put most of it up in here. And when I'm just laying this out, I can always come over it and do more layers, but when I'm just laying it out, I'm just scribbling. It's just kind of scribbling with color. And I'm just putting some highlights. Here you go. It's all just very dark. This is just a big blob of dark grayish color with some green in it. And I'm gonna get the light closer so you can see better. Yeah, here, let's just, let's just bring this light a little bit closer for the moment. And I'm just putting, putting less highlights down here, more highlights up here. And then when I go to this with white, so I gradually work toward white. You know, I put my colors on first. Then when that white hits the color, that's my that's my final little highlight. So I just get the get the color in place first, and then let the let the white come and mix with it. So I'm thinking that I want more color, so I'm going to put more of my green and yellow across here, green and yellow. Now here I didn't wipe out my brush, so that probably left a big streak of dark paint in the yellow. Let's put more of this bright color up here where it's coming out into the light. And then wherever I have my brighter yellower colors, that's where I'm thinking I want to put the white. Right here. Right here, maybe a little bit of sunlight striking that edge. And then I'm just looking for areas that have pure white on it. I just want to hit it a couple times until I don't see that pure white anymore, until it kind of tones down to a green. I always just want to save room, save room for the highlights at the end. Don't go, don't go full force on anything early in a painting. Always leave room for your brightest highlights. So I, as a general rule, I work as dark as I can near the beginning and then work my way up, up to highlights, you know, so in a traditional sense, I'm starting with, with shadows and working up to highlights. But more than just starting with shadows, I'm starting as dark as possible. Okay, that's going to go down there. And I think it'll look a little more 3D if I kind of bring this bring this forward out here. Let's put a little bit more, more color down in this area. So I'm taking my dark and putting it in the middle of my my light areas to break up this texture and make it smaller. So I find it much faster to uh, try to manipulate a texture that does the job. 
you want it to do than trying to visualize leaves or rocks or whatever it is I'm trying to paint. So in order to very quickly break apart all of these shapes to look like foliage, I just have a method for breaking apart my edges. I'm not trying to paint leaves as much as looking for big brush strokes. I see one right here, okay? So just working in slow-mo, I find a big shape and I intersect it. Find a big shape, intersect it with another. I'm just looking for edges, looking for edges that continue through, intersecting them with another small shape so that my texture overall is getting finer and finer, smaller shapes. And that's so much faster than trying to uh, than trying to manually create all of the tiny shapes. It's very quick to just come across and just identify little edges and break them apart. So now I'm gonna put more green and yellow right in here. So let's go green right here. Let's put more yellow on top of that. And now I've got, I'm laying the brush down a little flatter to make it float on top, kind of floats on top of all this heavy paint. If I go straight like this, it's gonna dig in and I'm not gonna get that, that layer of brighter paint on top as easily. So laying the brush down, floats it across the top. And then when I go over this with white, just a gentle touch with this long corner of the brush, is going to float the white right on top of the yellow and then the more i manipulate the texture the more those colors are going to start to mix together and then i'm starting to create my smaller shapes and i just have to know how to stop when enough is enough so i just wanted to make another cluster just kind of coming forward more three-dimensional look i'll do the same method a lot of the time that I don't want to look more distant and misty. And so I won't have this base to start with. And my shadows will be a lot more extreme and I'll just make sure that I leave some pure black little dots in there where I want deep spots. It's good to have those dark, dark little dots in between these lighter areas. But if I, if I make my highlights too bright again then it's going to kind of interfere with this continuous three-dimensional flow you know it starts to look a little bit more 2d if the colors start telling a different story so up here i'm just looking for real white areas just dabbing them spots that are a little too white okay now watch this i can put some rocks in there I can just go like this and grab some of this, this rusty color, put it in there, and I'm gonna stir it around a little bit on the edges, just blend the edges in, make sure that it's not too bright. And then when I come over to that and hit it with some white, creates a little bit of rock coming out from behind my foliage. So where are my shadows is the question. Where are my shadows in the foliage already? So that I can just go in there and immediately get, look right under, see this dark spot right under it? Boom, that's a great place to put a little rock popping out because it looks like there's a shadow on the top side where it's got some overhang from leaves. So if I just go to the lower portion of shadows, those are great places. Here's some darker spots right in here. So that leaf just had to go goodbye. And here's a shadow right there. I could put some in there. Wherever I've got a shadow, kind of under that shadow, ends up being a good spot. Okay, now I'll go to the white and I'll put some, some little highlights on this orange color. Again, trying to preserve that original shadow that I put this under. And then I'll make sure that that doesn't stay pure white. We don't want pure white spots. We got to mix it. Got to, got to stir it into that, into that base color a little bit. Let's get that little highlight in there. 
And then my end result is the earth coming out from under the foliage. All right, so let's back up, back up a little bit. And you know what I think would be cool right here is some bright flowers. So I got to make sure that color is real nice and bright for flowers. If I put my brightest, you know, this is the problem with trying to do flowers is that is that when you have a real bright sunlit painting, paint can't get bright enough to still have enough color in it to be in this. So if I put red across this, the red is too dark in its primary state. It's much darker than than this with all the white added. So uh, I need to set myself up with a dark enough background to see that bright red. And so, you know, if I if I want the flowers to be bright, I need kind of a dark painting or I've got to use some tricks. You know, I put white down and then layered color over it. But here I'm just going to put my red in the shadowed areas in order to get a nice bright color to look like flowers. So let's go back in here and put some red flowers coming off of this what would be maybe a vine so i'm looking for some some darker areas let's put some red in there put some red in here it just needs to be a dark enough setup let me dab it a few times to break it apart wow look at that look how this brushed up this is new for me watch oh look at that it leaves the middle dark and bright around the edge boom I'm glad I got this on camera. I've never done this. <laughs> this is awesome. Okay. I'm gonna get more red. I gotta do this. So so I'm noticing that the the uh, consistency. Now, if you look, don't bombard me with uh, how-to questions. <laughs> it was lucky that this happened. Okay. It's gotta be thin enough. This base coat is thick enough, and the red is thin enough that when I touch it, the red just immediately spreads out because it's thinner. And then the end of the brush is digging into the base coat, it digs in and makes that little makes that little spot. We got to try this with another color. So now I want to know if if I go in here and do this all over here. Here, wait, hold on. Let's do a little bit more through here. Man, I love this effect. That's so fun. Wish I would have done this when I was trying to do all those poppies in that Tuscan picture. All right, we got some big red flowers in here now. That's fun. It's going to be overdone if I put any other color in it, but I just so want to try this technique some more. Let's just do a little bit of yellow. So I think it's not going to work as good with the yellow. You know why? Because because the yellow is thicker. Here. Let's see what happens if I just go straight to it with yellow. It might. I did water this yellow down a little bit. Now we still get a little bit. Look, just a dab. Dark center. The end of the brush digs in. And... End of the brush digs in and leaves a dark center on that on that little spot. But the yellow, I got to be careful. It's going to turn green. I got to really just just limit the touches to it. I'm going to leave it like that. A little bit of yellow is good. If I go crazy with the yellow, then uh, I foresee it ruining the painting because it's no longer. It's just equally intermixing something, you know, you, having a having something that it's about. This is about those red flowers with the accent of the yellow. But if I just evenly distribute red, yellow, and, and just, I'm going to get rid of too much interesting light and shadow that's already here. All right, so now I want to build this cliff up a little bit more. I want to have the rock coming up, up this way. So let's put a little bit more. Let's put a little bit more going up the side there. Maybe right, right here. I'm gonna go right up this side, like that. 
So here I'm going to go black. Like this, and we're going to put some, we're doing the same, same technique now. Black, rust, maroon, whatever you want to call it. They put a few spots going right down into that. They're coming up, coming right up out of it. This color, when it mixes with that green, it kind of gets a little bit dark. So I can just come right down here and obliterate any of this foliage that I want to. And it actually creates kind of a nice transition shadow into it. We've got the orange, and then let's grab some white and make some edges on here. I'm going to kind of do something more creative now. Curve it this way, maybe curve it this way. Just a little bit different direction on the strokes to see if I can get something other than a straight down, straight down cliff. And I got to go over this white a few times in order to make it not so bright. There we go. We've got some shapes on those rocks. And then I want to put some light. This is the last thing I'll do before I go to go to our uh, comments, comments in the uh, live chat over there. Last thing I'll do is separate these two cliffs with the fun little highlight of the sun striking the cliff that is behind. And I'll separate the edges that way. So I'll put a little bit of this orange and then I'll put a little bit of black. And this is my further cliff I'm working on just to the right of this one now. And what I'm gonna do is put some, some shadows in place just like I did. I'm gonna get some wet paint to work with right here. I just always like going wet on wet. I could have just gone straight to highlights, but for me, it's going to look better if I if I do this. I just really like the kind of like you would get if you were working in oils, all the colors mixing together, creating a lot of intermediate tones. But I just want to create a like 75% mixed base right here so that I can come in and identify my most colorful areas. And so let's put a little bit more of this, get some more colored areas, more of this, this rusty maroon color up in here. Maybe a little dot of it here on top of this cliff, maybe a little dot here and here. And then I wanna get some yellow and put a little bit, I should use this yellow that's destroying my painting over there. Yellow there, yellow there. Brighter areas on the color, stay on the color like this. And I'm putting more of that bright yellow over to this side because I wanna be able to hit the this bright area. Let me get out of the way. I want to hit this with white and get this nice bright highlight catching this ridge right here out from behind this rock. So we've got the sunlight just coming down here and crashing through. And the white goes where the color is, goes where my brightest yellowest color is. And then just like everything else, I'm going to hit it a few times with the real light touch, that longest part of the brush going like this to tone it down, to not appear white, and then do fewer and fewer of them as I come this way. A few little dots here, here. And then by getting darker as I move down this way, you know, bright, bright highlights are so fun, but man, is it easy to overdo it so that nothing in the painting is bright anymore. And so a subtle highlight I think is a, a very valuable thing. 
in a picture. So I'm just going to come in here and do, do some more slight mixing. The more times I go over this color, the darker it gets. And I'm going to bring it down into here just a little bit, smaller and smaller shapes as I go this way. I ran out of wet paint to work with, so I'm going to borrow some from right here. I'm just going to put a few small shapes like that so this kind of tapers, kind of blends into that. Now I've got a little bit of light striking through this cliff to separate this edge right here. And to me, this, the subtlety of that is more, more valuable than having it in an extreme state because if i put a bright orange spot here i'm going to have that bright orange spot this bright orange spot that bright orange spot, all these bright orange spots side by side it's it just doesn't have this magic glow in the shadow it's like a glow within a shadow right now okay let's let's move out and oh yeah that's that is coming i'm very happy with how this turned out okay in my opinion this is a better result than the first one. The first one was practice <laughs> for this one. Okay, I'm going to take a look at uh, the comments. You know what? We better do something with this yellow. Who cares? It's too late now. It's getting all goobered up, right? <laughs> getting drier and drier. The painting looks great. I'm sorry about my yellow face, but it's making the painting look a lot more like it actually looks in this room. So, you know sacrificing myself for the look of the painting <laughs> all right so uh anything you guys want to talk about we'll take a moment and do that now you explain things so well hey thank you deborah i try very hard explanations are always very important to me because i like i like useful answers something i can rely on well so and so said this is true and if i do this this will happen i like answers like that instead of you just kind of gotta have this feeling and just kind of whoosh, whoosh, zoop and something happens, you know, not helpful answers. And you get that from artists so much. I'm not criticizing artists. It's just a hard thing to take something so much done intuitively by feel, put it into an explanation. And so, you know, it's important to me. Therefore, I try hard. So thank you for saying that. Uh, do you prefer to take pictures of your work in indirect sunlight? Oh, yeah, direct sunlight. Oh, man, that's really hard to work with. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Joe, you have done a fantastic job. Thank you very much for saying that, Angelina. And um, now we've got, but what's that yellow <laughs> nuclear explosion? Anyway, I'm going to put green. I'm going to put plants overhanging right there, like a green valley enjoying the, the stream right there. Okay, well, maybe you're right. The uh, shadowy NWD, what is trying to suppress art? If that's true, not much we can do. Are you going to add more shadow to the rocks going into the water on the right? Yes, I'm going to do that after after this. Can you uh, can you say something about color harmony? I always end up with a mess. I think color naturally harmonizes if you mimic what it actually does when it mixes the i think what what we perceive as non-color harmony is the result of paint mixing and doing things that light does not do we want to see the simulation of light making things beautiful and bouncing off and mixing colors but when we mix paint something else happens uh, blue filters out all of the red light coming out of a yellow and you end up with just the green left behind. And so you get all of these greener results when dark mixes with light. And so you compensate by replacing the color that's lost. And the way you do that is by understanding the primary colors used to simulate light, understand the primary colors used to simulate paint, get them both in your mind, get real proficient at that. So how does red, green, and blue make each color get real real fluent at understanding that quickly so that you know when you mix paints, this is not doing what light should do. And then you quickly go to the adjustment color, which is usually purple. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you right now, it's purple. And uh, magenta or purple, you add it in to replace what was lost. 
And much more color harmony is achieved just by doing that. Now, as far as like designer color theory, oh, I'm still trying to learn that one. Okay, now uh, let's see if we've got any other things that I can answer. I'm sure you can do something great on this yellow. I was the one who asked why it doesn't mix in the pot. Oh, okay, good. Oh, did you hear? I, I answered that. I was surprised you put it on the canvas. Yeah, okay, very good. Yeah. And uh, so I did not plan to put it on the canvas. That was just like, well, I answered that question. I kind of sacrifice everything for a good answer to a question. It's just in my blood. I can't not do that. <laughs> so... I had all the yellow on my brush. I was like, well, I don't want this on the painting right now. So I just put it where I'm not working. We'll worry about it when I get there. Uh, can you paint a Joker portrait? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yes. Yes, I could. But you could probably do it just as well. You know, learn to, learn to paint a, learn the parts of a face. Man, I cannot preach to you enough learning the parts of the thing you want to be good at doing. Learn all the parts because then you very quickly read through what you're looking at and you'll see things out of place much more proficiently than before you knew all the parts. You'll scan very quickly. We can become so fast at learning parts. It's a language. It's an alphabet. It's reading. It's writing. This is what our minds do. And so I just took that approach to, to visual, visual art with colors and shapes same same way we do like reading and writing and speaking. What's your take on niche paints like metallics, glow in the dark? Awesome. They're awesome, you know, but like you said, it's a, ni a niche thing. And so it can, it can be hard to find a lot of practical use and profitability. But, but I, I did that glow in the dark. If you haven't seen the painting I did with glow in the dark paints, look up that video. I just did colored pencil over the top of a glow in the dark face and I was so happy with the result. It, it came out awesome. Not to compliment my own work, to, but to say that what the paint offered my work was awesome. And metallics, I love metallics, uh, especially for doing fancy finishes on walls. I would use them doing like faux finishes. There's not any, there's not any paint looking like Joe's paint. I love how I thank you. Thank you. Uh, colorist from the film industry, RJL says, I love color and all its values. All right, sweet, I'm sure you have a lot, a lot of information to share, man. That is some awesome experience in the uh, film industry. When you use the canvas as a mixing board, do you ever have a problem with the brush strokes showing through the finished painting? Yes, but I don't usually consider it a problem unless, you know, I've, I've uh, you know, because the whole painting is textured and we actually like, uh, you know, random looking, free flowing brush strokes. People do that on purpose in their work. It's when it has an unattractive texture that it's a problem when it's just like this. This is a very good example of where it will be more of a problem, but it's a small problem. <laughs> yeah, so if I use the same spot, so I've learned to, use one spot for mixing for 10 minutes and then smooth it out, move to another spot because of that exact thing. Yeah, I don't like having big blobs of uh, on the canvas. Like I'll have one spot where this texture is visibly different than another spot. And I don't love that, but the painting still still looks good in the end. What do you, rec what, what do you recommend? Oh, which one has a glow in the dark? base. Uh, I did a picture um, of a sailboat. I guess you just have to look look for a glow-in-the-dark painting on the Mural Joe channel. I forget the name of that video, but I used glow-in-the-dark paints that my friend Rachel made. What do you recommend for keeping brushes in good shape and workable? Well, sunscreen works awesome for cleaning out the uh, dry paint crud in the brush. So when I'm done, if, if this starts to flare out, get all fish mouthed where the end of it is opening up, you can just put sunscreen in there, leave it, leave it sit for like 30 minutes. Man, that sunscreen eats up that paint so good. 
And uh, I recommend washing it. You, you might think this just sounds like a dumb and obvious answer. Wash it with soap because the soap gets pigment crud out that water will not. And so uh, a, a uh, stronger degreaser soap, I found laundry detergent works really well for washing out a brush when you're done. If you do that every time you finish painting, your brushes are gonna last really long and a lot better. Okay. Uh, <laughs> how can I enjoy whale drawing? <laughs> <laughs> we'll answer that one another time. Is there any way you can start your own line of, oh man, I would love to start my own line of paints. That'd be awesome. I think I need to get older. Joe, I'm your fan from Taiwan. All right. Hello from Taiwan. Be uh, Been watching your video for the whole day. You are such an amazing artist. Oh, thank you very much. Please don't make me your idol. I am just a guy enjoying what he's doing. You would find me disappointing as a person, just like all the other people in the world. And so thank you. Thank you for the kind compliment. Nice. I didn't know that about the sunscreen. Oh, yeah, it's a good trick, good trick. Too many chemicals, yeah, in, in sunscreen for sure. I agree, actually, actually, you know, uh, there are people in my family, they get, bad, get a bad rash on the skin from that sunscreen. So I remember getting no tears sunscreen i'm going to start painting now no tears it says on the label no tears we're like great no tears sunscreen put it on the sun put it on the daughter they're six years old we're having a good day they're both crying they're both in tears so you know sunscreen it's got definitely less less than healthy ingredients for <laughs> your skin but i think it's better than than a I think it's better than skin cancer. Here in Arizona, we get a lot of that, you know. So now I want to come over to cruise over to this side and do something with this giant blob of yellow. So I'm going to scoot the camera over. And in here, we're going to see, and I'm going to appropriately adjust the colors on the screen now so that we have a little bit a little bit better here let's take this take this down a little bit right here and put the put this up here i'm just looking at the colors on that screen so you can really see what i'm painting with with that yellow now yes this is going to be better and oh man does my face look bad Please just don't even look at my face, but the painting looks great. So we're going to use that. Fifteen minutes is healthy, huh? Fifteen minutes a day. All right. Well, I know that it feels really bad to work in a basement for a studio. <laughs> I know I need some sun. So here, I want to put some vegetation going out over the water and in between some rocks. I'm going to put rocks and vegetation in here. So let's go black for my nice dark shadows. And then let's let's put some bright greens in there. Let's take let's take this bright, this very saturated phthalo green, just like I did on the other side. And we're going to come right out from behind this. And now I've got my greener areas and my blacker areas. Do you see that? I've got greener spots, blacker spots. So I've already got some light and shadow established. And so we're going to go like this. I'm going to go a little bit lower on the water, like it's out over the water. And put more black spots in here. So where I have my shadows already established, I'm going to put yellow. Uh, wrong. Where I have the green already established, that's where I'm going to put this yellow. So I'm going to go in here like this. And I'm going to stay off the more black areas. And so now, <clears throat> after I get this, yellow in these bright areas, then it's time to 
manipulate the texture a little bit. So I apply the paint, I get it on there, and now it's ready to move it around and make it look appropriate for the distance. So I've got big shapes in here for something that I want to look more distant. And so what I need to do, I'm just getting rid of some paint right there. I'm going to find those, find those edges, just like I was saying before, edges between shapes. So I've got some big brush strokes and I'm very quickly gonna come across here, look for any edges that are really defining a larger brush stroke. And I'm just obscuring all larger lines and shapes. So you can see how rapidly this changes to smaller shapes by strategically targeting the edges of my brush strokes instead of just randomly putting more splotches on, which is just gonna produce more big shapes. So now I'm just targeting edges, edges, where are the edges? I'm just gonna chop any little edge I see. And now I have a smaller, finer texture in the distance. So I've got some color that I can highlight now. So let's put some white. Now my brush, I want this more in the sun. So I don't know if I want all that black in my brush. So here's where I might do a quick, quick rinse over here. It's just a little swish. It's not a, not a thorough rinse. You can still see a lot of paint on my brush, but it's a lot less than it was. I'll kind of squeeze it out with the rag. And then I'll take some, I'll take some white just on the point of the brush and go for my brightest areas. Right there where I have bright spots, that's where I'm gonna put these little highlights. And then same thing. I'm just going to chop apart all the little edges until I get small enough shapes to look like the kind of, kind of foliage uh, that I wanna see. And so let's go in here, do a little bit more. And let's go over in here. Put a little bit more of that white in here. I want to kind of see this bridging across this valley a little bit here so that it looks less, just like this one on this side, I kind of put a clump down here in the shadow to make it in perspective coming forward a little more. So here, let's get some yellow. I'm going to put my brighter, greener colors coming out and across, across this little valley area. Like that. Now I can go reverse on this too. So if I want an even brighter spot, so let's just say for some reason, this spot is in a little bit more of a shadow. And let's just take, uh, let's take some of this into a, into a brighter green now. So let's go green first. So I'm going to put bright green and then at shadow to the bright green. So I'm getting kind of far over on the picture here. It's a little bit harder to see because of the glare. Let me see if I can get a little closer like this. Okay, and then I'm gonna scoot the light over. Let me scoot this light so that we don't have all that, all that glare in the picture. I'm not sure if this is gonna, gonna do the trick, but I think it's hard. I think it's hard to see with all that glare. Now nah, this is better. There's a little bit, but you can see what I'm doing here. So now let's take the take the yellow and make a bright green in here, real bright, like this. Let's get more. I love that bright green. And then let's put yellow on top of the bright green like this. And so now what I'm going to do is aim for after after I'm done with this yellow, I'm going to aim for my greener spots now with black. So let's get rid of this, get rid of this green and grab some black and aim for the darker greener spots, black in there, black in there, black in there. It's okay if I miss and hit the yellow a couple times, no biggie. But as a general pattern, if I get this in the greener areas and then I go to 
again, obscure the edges of all my little strokes. So black up in this green area. So now I've got this real sunny patch in here. I'm gonna have some real nice shadows in my greens here where it goes, uh, it goes away from yellow as it goes into the shadow toward yellow as it comes into the light. And so now I'm gonna just obscure the edges of all these little shadows and in the process, create smaller shapes. So I'm just aiming for the edges of all my black spots, just aiming for edges, chopping them apart because I know that if I just get this pattern in place, it's gonna end up looking like a whole bunch of leaves that I didn't have to paint. And then it's time to do the white. So I've got the green in place and I'm going to Put some white on there so grab a little bit of that that highlight sorry i bumped the bumped the camera there and now right in here on these yellow spots i've got the white and that's where i want these highlights and i'll just hit it a couple times and maybe it's okay to leave just a touch of pure white in those areas where it's where it's uh maybe got a little bit of sun glare on it or something. This, this is in the sunlight, so it's okay for this to be nice and bright. Some white in there and there, and then maybe coming across, across this valley. Man, I hate that reflection that's on there. Here, I wanna scoot this over. I want you to see what's going on. So I have an idea. Bear with me for a moment, bear with me. I didn't have this worked out. Before we started but i realized hey this is a webcam and it can attach to the top of this computer so i'm going to go like this and i'm going to do this so that you can see way over on this side sorry don't look at the computer screen while i'm doing this should have thought of this before but it's going to be worth it Ah, let's go right in here. Ah, now we're on the top of the computer. We can move over here and eliminate all kinds of glare. There we go. So when I'm doing this green in here, you can see what I'm doing. Okay, okay, much better. <laughs> Whatever it takes, right? Okay, so now I'm in here. <clears throat> And I want to just put these highlights where this green is, and then it preserves my black shadows right here. So let's put white wherever I have that bright green, right in there. Great place for the highlights in there. And I'm thinking, hey, maybe I need, maybe I need a little bit more of the, more of the dark shadows in there as well. And so let's put, I'm, I feel like I could have a little bit more coming out and kind of overhanging this. Let's put green, green in here. And then let's put yellow on top of that, like this. Get some bright spots in there. And you can do this in any order. It's just like doing, you know, doing the rocks that you saw. Oh, yeah, we're going to do rocks. We'll end with rocks, okay, after we do this, this patch of green. We'll go white. Now I've got my highlights on my brightest yellower areas. So let's just mix this in, kind of obscure the edges again. Like this, get plenty of yellow in those highlights. I feel like I need some bright color right in here to make that come forward a little bit. And then wherever I have my darker, greener areas, this is where I can put shadow. So I'm going to be looking for these darker spots. I feel like I need more yellow in there. A little more yellow will make it more, more sunlit. Let's go right in here, put more yellow.
And then I can aim for my already dark areas with the black, little dots of black, whatever I already have dark. Right there to get some to get some depth to depth to my foliage that I have in here. There we go. Okay, here, let's back it up. You can see the see the overall look of it. I've got got some some texture, some three-dimensional texture to this because of the way I'm organizing this light and shadow. So I'll just do a few more little touches on that. And then of course, uh, there's nothing wrong with, with coming back and doing additional little dabs of whatever, whatever highlight. I don't always have to work wet on wet. So if I like some of these spots later, I can just mix a little bright green, mix some white, and further manipulate this area, which is what I'll probably do. That will probably be a later step in the painting is coming in here and just putting little highlights on things that are stand, standing out to me. So here I've got a lot more of this pure white so that this is nice and bright above this spot. And here I'm actually gonna try to destroy some of this pure white so that it's not, not quite as bright in here, maybe. It's fun to work with real bright greens, but they're way unnatural. They're super unnatural. So I always, as a general rule, I'm always adding, you know, black, black to the green or non-green colors to make it, make it less green. How about some rocks in there? So let's go like this. I'm gonna move this up, hang on, hang on, bear with me while I bend this a little bit. I got a flimsy old old computer screen that we're sitting on, but I think this is gonna be a better view. So let's put this right, right here. And <clears throat> you might be on the verge of witnessing a humorous mural gel accident because I'm gonna put this up on top of a paint can so that you can get up higher here with my shaky hands. So you can get up here and have a good view. Man, am I asking for trouble by doing this. Ah, now I just have to remember not to breathe. Yeah, let's go right here. A little further down. <laughs> oh man, I need to edit. That's something you don't get to do in the live show is edit. Oh, very good. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to put rocks in here. So what I'll do is I'll just put a bright rock coming right out from under that. The same way I did these way over on this side, I can just put some, some rocks. Look at this rusty maroon color coming right up here. And my black dried a little bit. <clears throat> this works much greater, much better if that green is still wet. So I'm just adding some black right up in here. And then watch, I'll add some yellow. Add some yellow to this and then add white to that to have the sun coming right over to this rock right out from under that bush like this. Now I've got this embankment kind of coming out from under this, out from under this bush. And I've got that nice kind of reddish color to the shadow. And it makes it just kind of go right out from under it that way. And so now let's make it come down, come down a little bit on the face right here. Let's add this maroon and black to here. So this is where it turns toward me a little bit, like this. Let's put a couple more little edges on top of this rock. Comes over here. And now I've got some, some rock in there. Let's put a little more right in there, maybe a little bit right there. Kind of under this shadow on top of this highlight. Between a shadow and a highlight is always a good place. It's always a good bet for making 
making little rocks pop through. So here's a good spot. Here's a shadow between shadow and highlight, between shadow and highlight right there. And then put a little bit of put a little bit of yellow on that and then put a little bit of white on top of there. I'll just kind of leave a couple couple little patches so that it's not just one flat shape. Maybe it's like the top of a rock coming up and going back down again behind. Now we've got rocks in the in the foliage. I think it'd look good to have a couple in here. Why don't we just kind of make up an edge going down there? There we go. Now I've got kind of a, a good interesting shape you know less less predictable i like when things don't just follow the follow the uh repeating shapes all around you know something a little a little less predictable than than the rest of the picture all right then let's put another maybe a bright rock coming right across here like i had in the first picture i really liked that so i'll put a like a flat rock on zoop right there across this front. I'll put some bright yellow on top. Shift that rock toward yellow as it's in the bright sunlight. And then I'll make it look like this is kind of the top of the top of the ridge where this is flowing down right here, like that. So on the lower side of it, I'm gonna go more toward the red and put a little bit of black, maybe over here, closer to the right side, then across across the base and then that's going to give me a mid-tone right here where I have less black and it starts getting yellower and then I'll add more of the yellow as I get higher in this picture maybe more yellow right up in here and then I'm ready for white let's put some white right on top of that yellow for our brightest highlight couple little tiny strips where the sun's maybe just nicking the edge. Put another edge right there. That one kind of goes back to this other rock and maybe connects. Kind of like the way it looks though to have some water in between. This has got to look like it's maybe flowing from somewhere. And you know what? I wanted to show you how to do this, this right here. A little bit of green mixed in with the this rusty color. And then just enough white to make it a little bit lighter than the colors that it's around. I'm gonna make this rock look like. So it's darker. It's darker than the water down here. I want it to look deep, but here I've got an upward facing edge. And I'll put a little bit of a, a brighter color here. So it looks like maybe there's, there's a tabletop on this rock under the water. But by adding the green to it, that's the secret. Keep that green in there to make it look like it's under the water. So here I'll go a little bit more white, just a little more. This is going to get darker when it dries. Let's go up and around here. Now that rock just drops down under the water. Just got to have the brightness right on that. And then, then maybe put like a, put maybe a, another rock bumping up this way. I kind of liked that rock I had in the first, like a boulder coming out of here. That'll be fun. So right in here. Because I don't want to get rid of all my blue water. That'll be kind of sad. So maybe I'll put it in here in the background. Let's get rid of some of that. I'll go big boulder in here coming up. And I like to make these, I like to make these ridges on, on rocks. Let's put some black for shadows. Just going like this. It's just going to make some shadows in between. So I always just am careful to Choose what I'm working in. Am I working in shadow or am I working in highlight? I put the shadow in, but then when I come to the highlight, I'm going to stay off these shadows. Make sure that they're separated by this mid-tone. 
So here I'm just working this mid-tone on each side of those shadows so that when I come in here with this yellow highlight, like this, it's nice and nice and colorful still. I don't lose it. And it, it uh, preserves the natural color of the light in the shadow. I get kind of miscolored that whoever brought up the subject of color harmony, I lose the feel of color harmony when this highlight hits that black that I just added in there. Okay, now we need some good looking reflection. So reflection on blue water needs to be, it needs to be a lot uh, purpler. So when this turquoise mixes with the orange, if it's light, it's gonna have kind of a purple hue to it. And so to make a reflection color, here's how I'll do it. On this water, I have to consider the color of the water, color of the object I wanna reflect. I'm gonna need some, I'm gonna put, uh, to make this more purple color, I'm gonna use red and let's put some white in there. And my brush already has a bunch of that kind of grayish green leftover in there. So look at the color it's producing. It's like this real grayish purple. That's perfect. That's what I need. So I'm going to add a little more white. And to get this, this, it, this would be like using black, red, white. I can make this real quick. But I'm just using leftovers in the brush to create this color. So here is a good place to put reflections of. So I can't use it for this color, but I can reflect this brightest color that way. So right under here is a good place to get a little water in my brush to get some skinny little slivers. And I got to really be careful with the direction of these. To keep it looking like water, I really need consistent direction. OK. There we go. We've got a little bit of reflection of that of that orange. Mm, that feels that feels too red to me. A little bit on the red side. Let's add just a little bit of black. See that black in there? So you wouldn't think that this is going to be the reflection color of that orange, but let's try it again. Just wiping this off with water. Do the same thing again with this new mix. This has a little more of the black in it. There we go. Mm, that's better. I like that better. So let's put this color going right across here. And let's put it under here as well. But here we better mix it with some green. Look at all this green down here. I don't want it to be nearly as powerful. So let's put some green in it and see what happens if we just go like this and add a little white. We just barely want to see it down in here. Put some reflection on this water in the foreground. So I use a gray violet to reflect the orange on this bluer water. Now, because this paint is dry, I'm doing wet on dry now. I'm gonna rinse my brush. And I'm gonna go up in here and try to stretch out these edges a little bit to make this look not so not so much like just a messy brush stroke. Soften these edges a little bit. Just trying to hit my edges. There we go. Now I've got the reflection of that rock coming down a little bit better. And I think it'd be cool if I had a couple, couple little deep spots in the water. So let's grab this, grab the green and blue that we were using. 
and put a couple spots just right across these lower areas. This makes deep water like that. Just going to mix the edges a little bit better and make it smoother. It's in the foreground, so I just want a soft look to this. I don't want a whole ton of that reflection. A little bit is good. Then I can put definitely reflection under that guy right there. Let's do that. So this is further away. I'm going to make a truer color. So it's going to be more like this because of the angle. So let's add white to that rusty color now. Something a little more like that. And now I'll just put little horizontal lines. Again, being very mindful of the direction of my brush strokes, very horizontal shapes. To get that to look like the reflection of that rock on the water. I just want to keep the shapes real horizontal. Of course, I kind of lost the shapes now, so we can just come back in there with some of the some of the other color if I want. If that happens and I lose my water texture, all I got to do is just get my other colors, and so I've got a little bit of that green, and I'll just. Make little dots of that coming across. Maybe a little black too. I don't know. Make it make it show up a little bit better. Then here, I want reflection of I want reflection of this waterfall. So that is going to be very much like like that color. So I've got kind of greenish water with this light. I'm just going to get like a lighter gray or green. So let's put all this thalo green in here. Oh, that's a good color for this too. Let's put a couple little waves. Oh, yeah. No, that was convenient that that happened right there. Okay, and then we'll put some white in there. So I'm mixing a reflection color for this. Just thinking about what the light would do. Let's go a little more purple. Let's add some magenta in there. And then we'll go like this. Let's get a little water so we get better, better uh, smoother strokes with the brush. There, now we got the little reflection of the fall back there. We could even do reflection of this fall right here. Look, see this color? Put a little bit of lighter reflection in there as well. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up for today. So uh, we'll just we'll just leave the computer where it is because it's in a very delicately balanced spot. <laughs> and here, no, no, I should show you the finished. I should show you the finished picture here. Let's get this camera off of here. Let's come over here, and we'll put this on a back on the tripod here. All right, sorry for my shaky hands. I didn't plan on doing this, but better that you see it. All right. This is this is why people download and edit and re-upload when they do live streams, because this kind of stuff happens. 
Ah, there we go, back on the tripod. Sorry, sorry, I know it's annoying. But hey, I'm just a guy in my house trying to make good free content, right? Okay, now you can get a good square view of everything that we painted. And so uh, let's let's see. Let's see what's being said out there. Anybody got any final questions, comments before we wrap it up for today? That land is kind of creepy. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joe. You're welcome. Why do you make purple with magenta in some parts and in the others with the red? Depends how how vivid I want the purple to be. I'll go to magenta if I need a more extreme, immediate purple. If I just need a grayer purple, just I just do red. And so in in some cases, it just what based on what's in my brush, what's in the mix. I'm just looking at it, saying ah, red's enough to get me there. The importance of identifying the closest color for the job because obviously you could use either one but uh it's a matter of what is going to get me the closest with just one little one little brush load and what will be the most accurate so that i can spend as little time correcting my mixes as possible thank you so much for saying well done rule rule of fun says love it can you suggest some tips to come up with an original painting idea. I would say uh, study fall in love with nature because that's where all of the ideas come from is uh, from what's already been made. And so you uh, get real familiar with what's out there, then manipulate it until, you know, something fun comes out. That's my process. I fall in love with what God has made and that excitement makes my memory stronger and my inspiration more love it always enlightening thanks again joe you're you're so welcome thank you for that that nice compliment do you always have a full idea of what you are painting before moving to the canvas <laughs> no i i switched to that method for these live streams because i realized my creative process was not followable for others. And it's more valuable to make a series of videos that people can follow along with if they want to. So my intent for this one is, is to make this followable. So it's, I've got the three parts now that are all in succession leading up to this idea. Great suggestions from others led, led me to that realization. There's a hand coming out of the water. Is there a hand? Oh, <laughs> I see it. <laughs> Very good. Good eye. Oh, man. I didn't think of that. <clears throat> Paint this, but with gravity sideways. <laughs> there you go. Creativity. Yeah. Manipulate what we already are familiar with, you know. Thank you, Joe, and friendly chatter, says Believe 3.0. I know you didn't mean to keep the caps on, I'm sure. <laughs> Please sub me uh, from India. Hey, thank you very much for tuning in from India. Thanks for sharing your time and talent. God bless you and your family. Thank you, Farah, Pazir, and... Uh, I got a painting scholarship. Thanks to your videos, really, and awesome teaching, says Jisha Shanware. Whoa, that is awesome. Man, that's that's like my dream, that other people actually make serious progress with the content that I've researched. Man, I'd love to hear that. Thank you for sharing. The color changes very much. Yes, it does. Wouldn't it be easier to use more light, fast acrylics? Oh, if there's any risk of it fading in the sun. I think light fastness is how it fades in the light. But um, I think all pigments are intended to be as light fast as possible. So for me, it's just about getting 
getting the right color for the jaw. Yeah, it's a good thing to pay attention to. I know with exteriors, that's a, a real big deal. How can we share with your paintings we have done from your lessons? Great question. Great question. Uh, man, okay. Tag Mural Joe on Instagram. At Mural Joe, you know, if you if you just put at Mural Joe when you're tagging your, your uh, posts on Instagram, I look there. Leave a link in the comments. I read the comments and I click on the links when people send me to look at their work as much as I can. So uh, better to do that on a comment when this video is posted, uh, when this, this is a record saved rather than just in the live chat here. That's a little bit harder for me for me to get to. Uh, so comments and then Facebook also, you can uh, post things on the Mural Joe Facebook page, although that probably has the least likelihood of getting seen. Do you varnish your pieces? Oh, just sometimes. I'll use a water-based polyurethane. You can look that up when I wanna do that. What will you do with these works? Roll them up and put them in a pile. <laughs> For when somebody says, hey, do you wanna sell that? <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. What if you don't have Instagram? Well, then leave a link to wherever you post it, leave a link in the comments. But uh, like I said, just do it in the comments under the video after it's permanently posted. I meant with the color changing, you have put right on the top of the rock and it became brown some minutes later. Yes, the paint darkens as it dries. And so I always have to be mindful. You can see every, everything got a little more colorful as this was continuing to dry after I painted it. And you can see now the slight reflection I put under this rock. Look at this. It's so dark and so subtle now. It almost disappeared. So. I constantly have to be aware of what it's gonna look like when it darkens down a few shades so that I can, so I, I probably would have done well to choose a little bit brighter color for that right there. When I when I watched so easy, when I doing so hard, <laughs> yes, I know, I'm sorry, I can't fix that, but I can promise you that more skill comes with time behind the brush. Sell them, Joe. Oh, I would. I would sell them. Uh, believe it or not, not that many people ask to buy my my paintings. You should start an exhibition. Yes, with all of my unfinished paintings, I should do that. One day I'm going to buy one of your paintings. I just need the money. All right. All right. Very good. Can you put an acrylic painting in a frame behind glass? Yeah, of course you can. You definitely can do that. All right, it's time for me to uh, hit the uh, hit the end button on this stream. So I'm going to pull the camera out just a little more so we can look at the whole the whole sky, see the whole picture, how it turned out here. And I actually am thinking that I'm going to add a few more few more little details to this and so you know we'll think about that it would be fun to add you know I did that big lizard thing <laughs> this ruins it for other people but but it would be fun to put a big animal in here do something like that but that's gonna have to be a that's gonna have to be a pre-recorded video that I'll just have to post rather than do it on one of these live things. I think that's <laughs> stringing people along a little too much when I when I mess with that a lot. Thank you for saying it's beautiful. Thank you very much. How can I preserve it so that it doesn't dry out too quickly? Um, not sure what you're trying to not have dry out too quickly, or maybe that was directed to someone else. Maybe you can tell me what you mean a little more. Why do you keep dipping the same brush in all the different colored paints? Because they all mix anyway. And so th there's almost always 
uh, whatever's in the brush is almost always needed in the mix that I'm going for. So I will rinse out the brush when I need something more pure. RJL. A ram taking a drink. Oh, that'd be that'd be awesome. That's a good idea. Like a big horn, big horn sheep coming down. No, we see those. We see those out here. You know, you can only, you know, I'm not going to say that. I was going to say something hunting related. That's not a good idea in a public space like this. <laughs> I'm not a hunter. <laughs> How much coffee have you already drank this month? One cup, man. Not that much. That's all it takes. That's all it takes to make me fly. No, how did you? Two. Two. But today it was only one because I didn't want to be shaking as bad. I'm more steady. And I had to record a video. Oh, that's my brother. Hey, man. <laughs> that's my brother saying that. I didn't look at the thumbnail. I bet you've had more. You should make that small bright cloud to the right into a crescent moon. Oh, that'd be cool. That'd be kind of a neat thing. Small, bright cloud to the right into a crescent moon. You got it, man. Good ideas deserve consideration. Let's do it. Let's see what it looks like. Let's just get the brush nice and sharp like this. And let's just take this right here. And I'm thinking the sun is up, so I got to make the crescent a little bit down. A little more pressure, less pressure, less pressure, less pressure. Oh, there we go. That made it perfect. Thank you for making my painting complete. <laughs> Very good. Just the act of painting, that's true. The creativity of the painting just brings me, my mind goes faster when I'm doing that. That's the top of the painting right there. How do I make enough so that I don't have to rematch the color too often? Man, only you know the answer to that, but that is a real problem. So uh, sometimes, I mix in containers when I'm doing larger projects and I need to revisit the color. So this is this is really helpful to do this if you know that you're gonna to wanna to use more of that color later. Just mix in little, little temporary storage containers. Yes, that crescent is beautiful, thank you, thank you. You passed the limits, thank you, Daniel. That's my buddy in Brazil. <laughs> oh man. What a good friend. Thanks. Okay. I got to uh, I got to turn this off now and so next week we start a new painting. I don't know what it's going to be yet. Oh, that's tomorrow, not next. I said Monday, Tuesday and Thursday. So, I got to think of a new painting to start. Mm, I don't know if I can put together a new painting before tomorrow. I got to let everybody know what's what's going on. I'll think of something. I'll think of something. We'll paint some. Let's do it. Let's do something underwater. Everybody likes underwater. Let's move away from all of these warm tones and move to something underwater like that. That'd be cool. Have a good day, Joe. Thanks for sharing. Yes, time for painting. I'm inspired now. Yeah, all right. More works tomorrow. Yes. Okay. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to start an underwater scene. Do something green, a forest. Well, that's a good idea too. Maybe we should do a forest. Yes, underwater. Okay, oh, underwater, 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 underwater. We've got more underwater. Okay, we'll save the forest. Underwater gets, gets the vote. It wins the vote, but we're gonna do more. I'm gonna keep doing these live streams. We'll do all kinds of stuff. Mermaids, hey, that'd be cool. Hey, then I could use some of my, my newly my newly developed knowledge of human form. I've really been working on this to do like mermaid. That'd be cool. Underwater forests, what? We could totally do that. 
All right, I guess we'll find out tomorrow. Flowers, yeah, we do. A good lesson on flowers, that's always a valuable thing. City and the forest, keep the ideas coming. I'm gonna be reading this live chat. Thanks guys for uh, being part. Time for me to end the video. I'm gonna get out of the way so we can have have one last look at how it turned out there. I'm very happy with that. The one thing I, I uh, will criticize about this is I don't like this. I don't like the symmetrical zoop right across there, even on both sides. I don't love that. You know, that's something that I think <clears throat> is way better if one side is, you know, lower and a different shape than the other side. I think it, I think it looks way better. So up here, I need to bump this up, up there. I need to make it go down. You know, look, look how much better this looks. Composition, you know, the composition, just taking this down a notch. Come on, bring it down a notch. I can just hear something saying. Put some sky in there. It was just white and blue. No big deal, no big deal. This is the touch-up process that you got to do with unhappy clients. Oh, a little bit. A little bit less on that side, sure, no problem. Let's just put it in there. See, doesn't that look better? Isn't that the whole composition just better now? It's not like being in the middle of a cereal bowl like that. Jellyfish cities, Salvador Dali style. <laughs> no, I'll leave that to Salvador. <laughs> yes, better composition. Oh, yeah, better, yeah, you know. Just kind of veering away from the geometric predictability, I think, is not is not great, not too much. Of course, it always seems like beauty is always in the balance. You know, it's never at the extremes of things. Love the way your mind thinks. All right, thanks. Okay, I gotta stop. Really, we're gonna go. Thank you, Joe. Going to paint a landscape mural on a metal building. Uh, and AZ, cool, man. I want to see that. Making uh, educated guesses based on videos like yours. rust a good base primer? I don't know. I don't want to give you a wrong answer on that one. But I think any any primer rated for exterior, you know, it seems like manufacturers do it. You know, there's some industry standards on rating something for exterior, interior. I don't know about that one, though. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to do this again tomorrow. I'll look forward to seeing you here same time. I'm not going to send out the big newsletter to the people on the email list. I'm going to send those a little less frequently because I feel that I'm spamming people a little bit by endlessly sending live show, live show, live show. We've been doing so frequently. So I'm going to post the link on Instagram, Facebook, and do it here at the same time. Just come to the channel, look at the main page, and uh, let me encourage you to visit my site to see other instructional videos that I sell there. And uh, I'm in the process right now of making uh, some more. All right. Thanks a lot. <laughs> we'll see you. All right. See you then. I can't stop. I can't help but read the, the uh, comments as they come up. I can't.